Hey guys, what's up? Paul Dovecchio here. Just going to do a quick tutorial on removing the chroma noise from the Blackmagic cinema camera footage. This technique is actually, it's not just for the Blackmagic cinema camera, it's actually to separate the luma and the chroma and then do whatever processing you want. This is a, a technique that I actually came across and it was used for people to actually sharpen their footage because your eyes are more sensitive to sharpening in the luminance channel. So this was a way of separating the luminance from the chroma and then just affecting the luminance with the sharpening and then combining everything together again for the final image. So let's just jump right in. Here we are in Resolve and I have some footage shot on the Blackmagic camera. I'm just gonna zoom in real quick and we can see over here in the wall and on the face, pretty much everywhere that there's this dancing noise pattern and it's actually, there's a lot of chroma noise in there too. Just a side note, I actually like the black and white grain, but I don't like colored grain. The Blackmagic Cinema Camera has more of a grain structure than blocky compression, and that grain structure is more like film rather than video noise. So it's more like film grain and less like the video noise that we're used to in DSLRs and other video cameras. So I actually like the grain structure, but I don't like the colored grain. In fact, whenever I'm doing visual effects or if I'm doing an effect to add grain to footage, I usually don't add the colored noise or the colored grain. I usually just add a black and white grain or monochrome grain to it just because I just like the look of that better. If you're like me, you'll want to remove the chroma noise from your footage. So anyway, these first two nodes are just to bring the footage up a little bit and do some, some color correction on it. Now, if I disable both of them, you'll see just how desaturated, flat, and dark the footage is. But I did that on purpose because I wanted to bring out more noise. If you don't expose to the right on the Blackmagic camera, you get more noise, so this was done on purpose. But with a couple corrections, you can bring it up, and then you can do noise reduction on the uh, on the noisy areas. But um, word of warning, um, and this is, why, this is why I actually like this uh, approach. If you... Let me just add a, another note here. So I'm just going to add noise reduction to this node and watch what happens when I do that. So I'm going to turn up the noise reduction here. Um, and you'll see that the detail and the threads in the lampshade just, you know, it's gone. Your noise is gone too, but so is all your detail. Um, the threads kind of just blurred into each other and now you can't even tell that they were threads. If I remove that, you can see that, once again, the, there's detail in there. I'm just going to delete this node. And we'll do a layer mixer. So what I did was after my last node, I added a serial node. And then I added a uh, layer node. And that, uh, you know, first created this one and then a layer node. Um, I created that and that created this bottom one and the layer mixer. So what we want to do is um, separate the luminance and the chroma. So this top one is going to be for the the uh, luminance channel. So what we're going to do is just remove all of the color. So I'm just desaturating the top one. It doesn't show up here. Um, that's because it's, you know, it's mixing everything. But um, that's all you have to do for the top one. Now for the bottom one, what we're going to do is remove all of the luminance information. So we're just stuck with the color. Remember, this is the luma node and this is going to be the, the chroma. So we're just going to remove we're going to take the, the gain and take this, um, you know, the luminance value here and just drop it all the way down. And so now we are stuck with the, um, the color information. So um, in the layer mixer, obviously, you know, the, this uh, picture doesn't really look like anything at the moment. But if we just right click on the layer mixer and go to composite mode and set it to add, um, we're back where we started. And it's as if we didn't do anything, but we have. We, we've we separated the, the luminance and the chroma. So now, now that we've done that, I can actually just apply noise reduction to um, the, or, or, you know, even blur the chroma information. And I can even sharpen the, uh, the um, luminance channel. Uh, and like I said, our eyes are more sensitive to sharpening in the luminance. So if I sharpen this, it's not going to sharpen any of the... Uh, than, you know, the color. And a lot of the times people like to blur the color uh, in order to get, you know, skin tones to be softer or just blend together a little bit better. Um, 
so we can do that. Or um, in this in instance, I'm just going to um, add some noise reduction to the the color values. So make sure you have your your chroma node selected, and uh, we can apply some noise reduction. Now I usually think two is a good place to start. That might be a little heavy-handed um, if we weren't separating these two, but I feel that two is a good place to start, and if you need to tone it down or even turn it up, um, in some cases you will have to turn it up. Um, but watch what happens here. Let me just uh, full screen this and move this over. And um, you can see the difference. Like You can see that there's there are these little red bits and, and you know, these things kind of dancing there. Um, if I turn the noise reduction up to two, you see that a lot of that went away. Now, again, remember I said that I like the the Luma, or oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the black and white grain, and that's all that's left. It's like this black and white grain. We can even turn this up a little bit more if we really wanted to. And you can see that all that's left is the, uh, the black and white grain. And if I zoom out and let's do fit. You can see that it's not, it's not really so bad. Um, I actually like the, the look of it. It gives it as, uh, kind of like a, a texture to it. Um, now, a couple things to just go over. Um, if we want to... I have to jump back into my node tree here. and um, You know, we'll uh, take the luminance. Now, watch what happens um, if I... I add noise reduction to the luminance because you do see that black and white noise you know it's still there that that, that grain if I add um, noise reduction to that again this is noise reduction to the luminance you'll see that the detail let's see I have this turned up to five and you can already see that the detail is just smeared all over the place you know it's, you can't even tell that those are threads anymore um, but watch what happens if I turn the chroma noise reduction up to 5. You can see that, you can still see that detail. And so, um, one of the things to keep in mind is that um, when, you know, our, our eyes are more sensitive to that, and plus, um, you know, that's where basically the detail falls is the contrast between, you know, the different things. So, um, if we just blur or add noise reduction to the chroma, we are denoising it a little bit, but we're also... Um, not losing any detail or if we are losing detail it's very minimal but the rule of thumb is that you want to just crank up the noise reduction just enough to get rid of the amount of noise and don't go any further than that because there's really no point um i'm not sure if it can cause any more like artifacting or weird smoothing or anything like that probably so that's why i would say just turn it up to a point where it just gets rid of the amount of noise that you want and uh nothing more now, um, if we did want to, you know, give our footage the appearance of it being sharper, we could actually take the um, the luminance uh, channel here and just uh, add some sharpening. So we'll come down here and uh, add some sharpening. Um, usually, I would say 0.45 is a good place to start. It might be a little bit too much. It might not be. Um, it depends on your shot. You might even want to drop it down even further than that. But I find that 0.41 or 0.4 is a little too strong so I usually like about 0.45 and you can kind of see this um, it looks a little bit sharper if you watch these threads in the lamp as I drop it down to 0.45 you can see that um, it gets a seems to get a little bit sharper now of course you know you look at it and you go okay that might be a little too sharp but if you zoom out and you know again you'll have to check it on um, your final delivery screen and everything just to make sure that you're not giving it a, a look that's a little too harsh or too sharp and uh, that, I think that's actually a little too sharp so I'm just going to drop it to 0.47 um, that gives me a, a nice sharpening without um, you know without any um, extra jaggies or anything strange in the image um, but you can see how powerful this technique is uh, you can actually, you know, separate out the, the luminance and the, and the chroma and and process them separately. And so, you know, again, I've gotten rid of that. If I if I um, 
you know, remove the, the noise reduction, you can see again that um, the colored noise is going to pop back in here. So you can see all that in there. And I find that distracting. I really don't like the way it looks. So again, we can just bring it up and, uh, and get rid of it. So that's a way of processing um, the luminance and the and the uh, and the color separately and and applying noise reduction to it. Now remember, you are applying noise reduction to all of the color. So again, don't crank it up too high. Um, I don't know whether this affects uh, the colored moiré pattern that you might get. Um, it's a very good possibility that it does get rid of that. But um, you might want to do your own tests. Uh, one of the things, you know, with this camera is the aliasing and, the, and a little bit of moiré. But um, if you are careful, you can avoid that. Um, and if you use this technique, you might be able to get rid of some of that, um, you know, some of the, the weird moiré and, and aliasing and whatever other artifacts are, are um, in your footage. Uh, or you might be able to just, you know, reduce it a little bit and... Um, you know, not make it as, uh, as noticeable. Of course, the moiré pattern is probably still going to be there, but, um, hopefully it'll get, you know, it gets rid of some of the, uh, the color, you know, uh, because when you, when you have, um, certain moiré patterns, there's like a rainbow kind of color. So you might be able to use the noise reduction on the color just to get rid of some of that. Um, and you know, you won't really notice, um, a lot of the, uh, the, the moiré pattern as much if, uh, that rainbow isn't, you know, pinging out, um, so once again, this is uh, Paul Del Vecchio. Uh, I'll catch you guys soon, and thanks for watching.